Okay, boys and girls. Well, we've got a new problem here today. This one's kind of an interesting one because I personally like questions that don't have a lot of numbers in them. They're more like university or college questions. So what we have is, let's change colors here. We've got a ladder, actually. But the ladder is leaning up against a wall. Now, there's an angle at which the ladder is leaning. And we'll say that the length of the ladder is L. The question is, if the coefficient of friction on the ground is m, and if the mass of the ladder is m, and there's a coefficient of friction of mu or on the ground, what is the minimum theta for which the ladder won't fall? So um, this is kind of an interesting question, but it's all mathematically, uh, I mean, it's all algebraic, pretty much. All right. Well, listen, let's start drawing our force vectors right in the middle at 1 half L. We've got mg going down. And at this point, the wall, we assume, can only push in one direction, and that is perpendicular, and we'll call that the force of the wall. Now, the reason, f the reason why the ladder can only push horizontally usually is because on this end, ladders have a kind of a corrugated bottom where they're meant not to slip. And at the top, ladders usually have a uh, roller such that they do not have any uh, friction vertically. And the reason for that is because you like to be able to roll the ladder up the wall. So at the ground, we've got two forces. There is an FGY and also a FGX. And by the way, I mean, I've pretty much picked these forces arbitrarily, their directions. However, I'm pretty sure that's going to be their directions from life experience. Now, are there any other forces? Well, that's it. There are no other forces. That gr the ground can only push vertically and horizontally. Gravity is going to act at the center of the ladder, and the wall is going to push to the left. If you're ever, if you're ever wondering, have I drawn all of my force vectors, ask yourself this question. What's touching it plus gravity? Well, in this case, the ground is touching it, and it is able to provide two forces in two different directions. The wall is touching it, which can only provide one force perpendicularly to the wall. And then you finish the sentence by saying plus gravity. Therefore, th here it is. Now, what's interesting, though, is you might feel like, well, hey, where does friction come into this? It does. The reason why friction comes into this is because the horizontal force by the ground can only be possible if there is friction with the ground. Now, what's the equation for friction? Friction is equal to mu fn. Now, by the way, you have to understand something here. This equation for friction is only valid for maximum friction. OK? This is only good for maximum friction. Um, and by the way, this question is a maximum situation case. Why is it? Because it's saying find the minimum theta for which the ladder won't fall. 
Therefore, this is a maximum case. Hence, this equation will apply. If you think about it, um, you know, let's assume, let's just draw something that looks pretty ridiculous. Here's a wall, and here's the ladder. Okay? Um, so, in this case, this is going to be theta. Okay? Now, obviously, this angle is smaller than this theta, but there's no way that a ladder would be able to stay upright in this situation because it, the frictional forces here would never be enough to keep it from sliding to the left and falling to the ground. I mean, would you feel safe climbing a ladder like this? I definitely wouldn't. I'd fall to the ground. This one seems okay, though. But the question, obviously, is let's do it mathematically. Well, how are we going to do this? Let's start with our three equations that we always start with. This one, this one, and this one. Now, this one is summation of the torques. We have to figure out what place we'd like to take the torques about. Personally, uh, it's probably a simple thing to take the torques about point G. Let's call this, since, this, since I'm using G to represent the ground here, let's denote that point as G. And so we'll take the summation of the torques about there. Why have I chosen that point? Well, for the simple reason that if I choose this point here, I'm going to automatically obliterate two f forces out of the four. Makes life easy. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so for the x's, summation of the forces in the x direction, I've got fgx positive and fw negative. So I've got fgx minus fw, that's got to equal zero. So I know now that fgx has got to equal fw. Let's do summation of the forces in the y direction now. Well, I know that FGY minus MG has got to equal zero because those are the only two vertical forces. So I know that FGY has got to equal MG. Uh, so far, so good. And... Let's see where we can go with this. Ah, right. This guy, FGX. Well, for the maximum situation case, that's going to equal mu FN. And in this case, FN, which is this guy, the normal force at point G is equal to FGY. So FG, uh, FGX, therefore, which is, let me write it to you this way. FGX equals mu FGY, right? So now I can just go like this. Now, um, I'm pretty much done because now I know, I'm trying to get theta here, by the way. I'm trying to get theta. Oh, I'm not quite done, actually. Sorry, I apologize. I should rephrase that. Um, FGY is equal to MG, right? And so now I know that mu times FGY, which is MG, is equal to FW. So I know now what FW is. Um, however, I still don't have anything to do with theta. So let's take the sum of the moments about point A and see where we th see where that gets us. Uh, 
I just want to see if I've done this correctly here. Fgx equals Fw, and Fgx is equal to the force of friction, which is mu Fgy, which is equal to that. That's right. And since Fgy is equal to mg, mu mg is equal to Fw. Correct. Okay. Let's now do the summation of the torques. Now, to do the summation of the torques, we're going to move this force down to here such that it is perpendicular to the arm going to point G. And we can move this force over here such that it is also perpendicular to the arm. Okay? And then we just have to calculate some distances. So, let's do it. What are these distances, by the way? This distance here is going to be, that's an L. Therefore, this distance is L sine theta to the top, right? And this distance is L cosine theta, but a half of it because it, bi it bisects this side. So it's 1 half L cosine theta. Now, let's see if we can figure it out. So from here, we're going to go summation of the forces. Ah, which way, which way are they? We've forgotten. About this point, this force produces a... <coughs> uh, counterclockwise so it's a positive rotation this one produces a clockwise so it's negative so I'm gonna go here it is mg times one half L cosine theta and of course that's gonna be negative and then I'm gonna go plus FW right from here times L sine theta and that's going to equal zero because there's only two forces now let's solve for theta well uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'll take this term to the other side and I'll get FW L sine theta is equal to mg times 1 half times L times cosine theta. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'd solving for theta, the only way I'm going to solve for theta is I'm going to take this term and I'm going to put it into the denominator here. And then I'm going to take these two guys and put them over here. By the way, the L's cancel out. I don't know if you noticed that. The L's cancel out. That's an easy thing to do. So why am I actually bringing the cosine from the numerator to the denominator here? Because sine theta over cosine theta is equal to tan theta. So basically, I'm going to end up with tan theta here. And on this side, I'm left with mg by 2. And taking this term down here, I'm done. However, what's interesting is that the FW here, which I'm not really sure what it is. Sure, I know what it is. I know what it is from up there. So that's going to equal mg all over 2 times mu mg. And if you'll notice, this mg cancels out with that mg, and I'm left with 1 over 2 times mu equals tan theta. Hence, tan theta is equal to the inverse of 1 over 2 times mu. And that's the answer. Thanks for watching.